I can really testify to that. All my life, you have been faithful. And as I say, it's quite a long life. Connor, you're it, where is he? He made me laugh. Being all sad about everybody's holidays being over when you're still to go away. <laughs> yeah, it's good to see everybody. Good, to, Really good to see the visitors. And really good to see you people on live stream, including you, Pastor Glenn. That's really good to know that you're watching us. Really, really great. Now, you can see us, but we're dying to see you. Absolutely. Can't wait for that. But no, it's really good to have you with us. Um, lots of you will have heard of Hans Christian Andersen, who was a Danish writer, probably most famous for his fairy stories like The Ugly Duckling, The Little Mermaid, The Snow Queen, and The Emperor's New Clothes. Now, in this story, The Emperor's New Clothes, <clears throat> excuse me, he tells about a proud, arrogant king who was duped by a pair of con men. They had con men that long ago. They were playing to the king's pride. They told him that they would make him a, some new clothes, but only a very clever person would be able to see them. To the ignorant, they were invisible. Of course, the king, not wanting to appear ignorant, went along with this and actually paraded through the streets in his new clothes. The crowds lying in the streets could see that he was naked, but they didn't want to appear ignorant either. But a little boy shouted out, the king's got no clothes on. <laughs> so that put paid to the king's pride. Unsurprisingly, the Bible actually gives us advice on what we should be wearing. In Colossians, a, a poor Vicky, I, I had her all mixed up with these verses. I think it's 3, 9 to 14. Yeah, well done, Vicky. <laughs> um, this is from the message. Don't lie to one another. You've done with that old life. It's like a filthy set of ill-fitting clothes you've stripped off and put in the fire. Now you're dressed in a new wardrobe. Every item of your new way of life is custom made by the creator with his label on it. All the old fashions are now obsolete. Words like Jewish and non-Jewish, religious and irreligious, insider and outsider, uncivilized and uncouth, slave and free, mean nothing. From now on, everyone is defined by Christ. Everyone is included in Christ. So, chosen by God for this new life of love, dress in the wardrobe that God picked out for you. Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, discipline, be even-tempered, content with second place, quick to forgive an offence. Forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you. And regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic all-purpose garment. Never be without it. Now, the first item in this wardrobe is compassion. Dress in compassion. Compassion doesn't just mean feeling sorry for someone or some people. It actually means to suffer together, to feel motivated, to relieve the suffering. And it's good that we were praying this morning for compassion, because Compassion, the organization, is very well named. People are motivated to give on a regular basis to relieve the suffering of children in poorer countries. Are you an are you, am I, motivated with compassion when we see suffering? It could be close to home or it could be far away. Nowadays, with television being so immediate, we get horrendous images of suffering and hardship beamed right into our living rooms where we're sitting in comfort. It's easy to be overwhelmed. And then sadly, in many cases, as we watch it night after night, we become hardened to the images. When we see someone suffering, does compassion make us act or do we shrug it off and walk by on the other side? It's very easy to judge others. And even when we're correct in our judgment, do we look at them with the eyes of compassion or condemnation? 
Is that our first reaction? When Jesus was confronted with the woman taken in adultery, he, of all people, knew that she had done wrong. But rather than come down heavy on her with condemnation, he treated her with compassion and told her to go and sin no more. Are we as compassionate as that? The second thing to dress ourselves in is kindness. And this has become a little bit fashionable recently. You know, people are being encouraged to do random acts of kindness. Well, that's no bad thing. In fact, it is a good thing. But performing acts of kindness isn't quite the same as clothing yourself with kindness, which means we should be kind all the time, not just a random act. And we, it means that we shouldn't be mean or horrible to people. Kindness should be our default position. And the next thing that we should dress ourselves in is humility. In James 4, 6 to 8, we read, God opposes the pride, but gives grace to the humble. So humble yourselves before God. We must dress ourselves in humility. It's in our hands. We must humble ourselves. We have to do it. In the story about the emperor's new clothes, the king's pride made a complete laughing stock of him. I'm sure none of us wants God to oppose us, which he does if we're proud. The proverb tells us pride comes before a fall. And I'm sure that many, if not all of us, have found ourselves in that kind of situation to a lesser or greater degree, so sure that we're right and then have the fall when we have to admit that we're wrong. It's not a nice feeling. Sorry, I can't read my own writing here. It's just a little bit of note. Anyway. The next one is quiet strength. I thought this was an interesting one. Yeah. Quiet strength. We don't have to shout about it. We often talk about strong, silent types. Being strong in the Lord doesn't require us to make a big show of it. God wants us just to get on and do things making sure that we're doing them in his strength and not our own because if we're doing them in our own strength we will fail so we should clothe ourselves in quiet strength discipline who likes discipline not many this is an important one for a christian though not to live a disciplined life is not a good testimony it also means that there won't be much progress in our Christian lives. With indiscipline in our lives, we will constantly be having to confess our sins. And yes, there is no doubt that God will for forgive us our sins. As he says in, his, in 1 John 1 verse 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just and will forgive our sins. But if we're constantly having to do that, we're not living and making the kind of progress that God wants us to make. And I'm sure we would like to make ourselves. Self-discipline can be difficult. Our old nature will fight against it. But remember, much better to discipline yourself than to have discipline imposed. And the last one, but the greatest, of course, is love. Regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic, all-purpose garment. Never be without it. Love makes up for practically everything. Love covers a multitude of sins. The well-known passage in 1 Corinthians 13, 3 to 7 says, If I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't have love, I've got nowhere. So no matter what I say, what I believe and what I do, I'm bankrupt without love. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Yep. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut, doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others, isn't always me first, doesn't fly off the handle doesn't keep score of the sins of others. 
doesn't revel when others grovel, takes pleasure in the flowering of truth, puts up with anything, trusts God always, always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps going to the end. What verse 14 in the original passage that I read in Colossians is saying, that even if you don't put on compassion, kindness, quiet strength, humility or discipline, do wear love, it covers everything. Remember, we have to dress ourselves. Only very rich people or royalty have people to dress them. <laughs> it's our responsibility to make sure that we're dressed correctly. If we don't put on these clothes, dressing ourselves in the things that God wants us to, we're leaving ourselves open to ending up doing what the enemy wants us to do. If we've no compassion, we will become selfish, greedy, and only looking out for ourselves. With no kindness, we can become jealous, cruel, and uncaring what is happening to those about what is happening to those round about us. If we don't put on humility, we'll become proud and arrogant, a bit like the emperor in the fairy story. We won't be any use to God if we can't be humble, and we'll also repel those who are trying to help and bring to God. And if we don't wear love, then all these things that First Corinthians talks about will be us. We will be bankrupt without love. No matter what we say, no matter how we live, if we don't love, we're bankrupt. And it will be me first when we don't put on love. We will find ourselves flying off the handle and all the other things that wearing love prevents us from doing that we read about in that um, passage. It would seem nowadays that as regards what people wear, anything goes. Some of you know that I've just come back from a, a little cruise. It wasn't a Mediterranean or Caribbean cruise. It was just around some of the British Isles. But I tell you, and those of you that do cruise, you'll know you see everything on a ship. People, people dress in amazing ways. But unfortunately, that's not the case in the Christian life. For the Christian, just anything doesn't go. If we want to reflect Christ, we must wear the clothes that God wants us to. So, what are you wearing? Let's just close our eyes for a little while. This might all be, for some of you here, and for some of you watching online, you'll be thinking, well, I'm not even a Christian, so what's that got to do with me? You know, God loves you, and God wants to be in your life, and he wants to see you dressed in these things. He sent his son to die for you, and he sent his son so that you could live and have that kind of life. If you've been watching online for a while and still haven't done anything about giving your life to Jesus, then just think about it today. And if you're here, maybe for the first time, or maybe lots of times, and you still haven't asked God to come into your life, I'm going to pray, and I want you to pray this prayer yourself, just into yourself. Heavenly Father, thank you for coming to the earth to die for me. Thank you, Lord, for being willing to go to the cross to save me from my sin. Lord, I ask that you'll come into my heart, that you'll forgive me for my sins, and that you'll make me a new person, a new person in you. Lord, thank you for doing that for me. In Jesus' name, amen.